I want to create the cut files for the applique portions that are in the pumpkin part of the placemat. So the way to do that is to pull the design into in Brilliance. This is in Brilliance Essentials. And when you click the plus sign up here in the corner, it opens up all of the different pieces and parts that make up the entire design. And as you can click through them, they will highlight over here in the screen so you can see what it is that you're looking at. And generally, the placement line is what we want as the cut file. So here is the placement line for the stem. And what I'm going to do is just click on this color chip right here. And when that happens, you get the thread box, but it has color and applique. And I'm going to choose applique. And then I'm going to hit the drop down arrow and choose applique position. And it says it has already inflated at 1.5 millimeters. And that's great so that we know that the tack down stitch will catch it and the edges will all be covered by the final satin stitch. And all you have to do is hit save. And a box will come up and let me get to embroidery and Halloween and placemats. And you can see it wants a file name and it's going to save it as an SVG, which is awesome. So I'm going to call it pumpkin stem and save. We get a dots per inch box. We don't need to do anything with that. I'm just going to click cancel and X out of this. And we'll continue on down through the design. There's your tack down stitch. And here is the cut line the placement line for the outer pumpkin. I'm going to click on the chip again and go to the applique tab. And I hit the drop down until it applique position. Make sure it's inflated, which is a default setting. So that should be good. I'm just going to click save and I'm going to click pumpkin stem up here so I don't have to type as much. And I'm just going to put outside say you can okay or cancel either one it doesn't matter and I'm going to go through these again and see here is the pumpkin inside click that tap OK See how quick this is once you know what you're doing. Okay, I've finished with everything that I need to creating the cut files. Now I'm going to go to the brother canvas in the cloud and get it all set up and ready to be sent down to the machine. You don't have to use the brother canvas cloud. You can go to your files and here is all of my files. There's my face, my pumpkin inside, the leaf, the outside and the stem. And I want to save these to my USB drive. So I have the USB already plugged into the machine. I'm just highlighting them. And I'm going to grab them with one click and drag them over to the USB. And then see how it says copy to USB and let go. And it's that simple. Now I can click that and there are all of my SVG files on the USB ready to go over to the cutting machine. However, I want to send them wirelessly to the machine. So I am going to go out to the Canvas cloud and after I've logged in, then I'm going to click new and I'm just going to click right here. There's a button that says import SVG when you hover over it. So I'm going to click on that and it wants me to choose a file and I've got them all right here in one area. You have to do them one at a time. So I'm going to 
put my face and open and tell it okay. And there's that. These are all separate and I want them to be one piece. So I'm gonna highlight them all and right click and group. And I'm just gonna move it out of the way for now because every time I import one, it's gonna go right up here in this corner. So now I'm gonna hit SVG again and choose the file and get the inside, open, okay. All right, I'll put that right here. And I'm gonna go SVG, choose file, leaf, open, okay. Put this right here. SVG, choose file, outside, Okay, okay. And the last one, choose file. I'm gonna get the stem and tell it open and okay. Good. So I'm gonna take my face and put it right back up here. I'm gonna put my stem right there put my leaf right here. What I'm doing is I'm trying to leave enough room all around the pieces so that there is enough space for me to plop a square on there. And when you click on one piece, you can tell how big it is because it will give you the size right down here. So I know that a, a two inch square, probably two and a half by two and a half, because this is almost two inches, will work just fine for the leaf. And then the face, you need to group them. So um, here I know how big that's gonna, how big of a piece of fabric I need for that. These need to be grouped. So I'm just gonna take my pointer and I'm gonna drag it over both of them and right click and group. And that way I know now how much fabric I need, probably a five or five and a quarter inch square will work just fine for that. And I can put it all in that part. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and ungroup so that I can move them around individually if I need to. Once they're grouped and you download them, you cannot ungroup them on the machine. So this is all ready to go now. If I want to save this, I'll come up here and click project. And here is a file box, an inbox with an arrow in it and a plus sign. And I'm gonna click that and now it has saved. So if I ever need to get to it again, I can, it'll be right here in my projects. And now I wanna download this to the machine. I'm just gonna click this big download button and it wants to know, do I wanna download it to my computer as an FCM file? No, I already have the embroidery file from Designs by Juju, so I don't need to do that. And I'm gonna do scan and cut transfer. Click that and we're done. So I'm ready to go over to the machine now and retrieve it from the cloud and cut out all my pieces. I'm getting ready to cut out the pumpkin pieces for the Designs by Juju pumpkin section of the placemat. And I'm changing my style today. Everybody's been telling me, oh, you need to put the fabric face up, take the paper off the back and do it a different way. So I have heat and bond already adhered to the back of this. We'll see how it works. Here's my inner pumpkin face. Okay, here's my outer pumpkin face. This is an ombre fabric. We'll see how that looks. Okay, and then here is my stem. And that's going to go about here, that's where I put it. We can move stuff around. That's the beauty of the scan and cut, is you can move things around after you run the fabric through the machine. So you can see if what you have is going to fit where you think you want it. There's my leaf, and then here's my pumpkin face. This is the purple mat, and I think I'm using the gold blade. Okay. Put all this 
spray it down here with my little scraper. Make sure it doesn't decide to pull, pull around. I've already downloaded the pattern from Canvas. So I'm going to put this in and hit the load. And we're going to hit retrieve data and pull that. I'm getting it from the cloud. And there it is. So now I'm going to hit this uh, third, the middle button in this row of three right here. That's the scan mat. I'm going to hit start. Everything looks like it is pretty. Now, this one here, I want. This is hard for you guys to see, but I want to rotate this. Um, I'm going to edit and object edit, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees this way. And I want to do the same thing with this one because of the ombre part of the fabric. If you can't see it, just touch it, and it'll give you the box, and then you can kind of get an idea of where the box is in relation to the cut. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to OK, select, cut. Half cut is off, good. And I'm going to hit start. We'll see how it does. It says it's going to cut them all in two minutes. says it's done. Let's see how it turned out. Peel up this extra first. You know, part of the problem I think with doing these, I mean it's not a big deal, is that this is using a stitch file, excuse me, this is using a stitch file as a design file and so it may not like I could see the blade wiggling as it was cutting so it may not give you a super straight precision line cut but it did a pretty good job I like it be careful not to stretch that turned out nice look at that I like it okay I mean, if it leaves a couple of threads, that's not that big of a deal, but this really turned out great. How about that? And it's inflated that 1.5 millimeter, so it is going to get captured under these stitches. That's going to look awesome. I'm do a little face. Cool. All right. I want to put this on a piece of paper in the order they came off so I remember which eye is what, right or left, because they may not be identical. Okay, I'm a believer. This pretty much worked pretty well. Worked out really, really well. All right, so old dog, new trick, all that, right? Pumpkin, leaf, stem, and face, and we are ready to go to the embroidery machine. Back here at the design in Embrilliance, I want to send it wirelessly over to the Luminaire. And you can do this with the Luminaire or the Baby Lock Solaris. So if you click on the design, um, you can tell down here at the bottom of the screen, it says selected is eight and five sixteenths by five and three quarters. So this will fit nicely in a six by 10 hoop is fine, I think, or maybe a little bit bigger, but I will use the closest hoop I have in size that will fit that. So that tells me what hoop to use. And then I'm just going to come up here to the top and click Utility and scroll down to Send to Solaris XP1. It also works with the XP2. And I'm just going to call it Pumpkin. And OK. 
and file has been sent to the machine. Great. All right, we're ready to get to stitching the pumpkin. I don't have a six by 10 hoop. I just have a nine by 14. That's the smallest size I have that will work. So I have sent the design wirelessly to the Luminaire. I'm gonna to touch embroidery and the pocket for memory and the wireless button. And here's my pumpkin and set. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to embroidery. I don't have to do anything to this. It's just ready to go. And the first stitch is the placement line for the batting. And I'm using the same thread that I'm gonna use for the stem because the stem is the first colored stitch that you would see and I don't wanna change threads all the time. So I'm just gonna go. I'm using a 7511 organ needle and I have a regular 90 weight bobbin. Someone had asked me a question if I change the stitch length on my embroidery designs. When you do machine embroidery, that stitch length is totally determined by the digitizer. You really can't do any kind of editing of the stitch length on the machine if you wanted to do anything like that, and I don't recommend it, but if you wanted to do anything like that, you would need some kind of digitizing software to be able to go in and totally edit the design in a computer and you can't do it on the machine. So this is a scrap batting. Uh, this is a great use of scraps to do little projects like this. This is why I keep all my little scrap batting pieces and it's gonna stitch it down. You just wanna make sure that your batting is covering all of the stitch lines by at least half an inch. And now I'm gonna trim away the excess batting. I'm using a good pair of Ginger curved scissors and trim right on top of that stitch line. When you trim batting, you, want, you don't want your scissors at an angle. You want to trim them with the scissors flat. That'll get you close to the stitching without cutting into it. If you lift up the batting as you cut, you'll get a nice clean cut. Whenever you put your hoop back in the machine, it's a good idea to put your hand on the arm of the embroidery machine and then push with your other hand. You don't want to accidentally shove the mechanism here that will get it all out of whack, and that's not good. <clears throat> the next stitch is the background. This came out of a layer cake or something. It doesn't matter that the thread color doesn't match because that thread is gonna be caught up in the seam Oh, I was close. <laughs> There's my half inch and that's it. That's what we have to trim it down to. Okay, the next stitch is the placement line for the stem. And this is where the proof is in the pudding to see if these SVG files fit. Get my little stem here. Let me find it. it looks pretty close. I didn't trim that very well. I've got some fuzzies. All right. So, let me get my little ironing pad. This is from Embroidery Garden. It's an in-the-hoop design from Embroidery Garden, and there is Insel Bright in here. And what I like to do is to put it under the hoop on the bed of the machine. This, this way you don't have to go to the iron all the time. And I take my ribbons and put them here so I don't forget that it's under there, because I will forget that it's under there. All right, it looks like it's gonna fit perfect, but just because it fit doesn't mean it's all going to get captured up under there. All right. I've got my little Cricut iron. This is the Cricut mini press. I love this thing. It is perfect for in the hoop projects. And I'm just going to 
heat this. I've got it on all three dots. So it's at the highest heat setting. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, pull this out. I cannot tell you the number of times I've sewn that to the back of my project. <laughs> okay, let's see how we do on the tack down. I don't have to do the tack down stitch because I've ironed it, but I just want to check. That looks good. Y'all, that's perfect. So when you do applique, one of the things you kind of have to worry about is not, I mean, also that did the tack down stitch capture the edge, but what if your fabric sticks out a little farther and then when it comes to the satin stitch, will you still have fabric sticking out? You don't really want fabric sticking out outside of the satin stitch. That's about an eighth of an inch. I think that that, because it's, it's just on right here and it's a little over right here. So I think that this is going to be okay. So now I need to do a thread color change to orange. When I do a thread color change, I just tie the two, kind of twist them a little bit, and I just do a single knot before the first thread guide. And then I pull it from in front of the needle and make sure that everything threads properly. really good. This is that ombre fabric and I wanted the darker part at the top, at the bottom of the pumpkin. That is so cool looking. Okay. If it's going to stick outside of the thread line at all, I want it to be on the inside because that's going to also be covered. All right, there's that one. Somebody's trimming a tree outside. <laughs> it's pretty loud. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can. There, that looks great. Okay, now let's do the tack down. So perhaps inflating 1.5 millimeter, the default on Embrilliance might have been a little bit too much in this case. And so that I want you to take a look at this real close. If this was the outside right here, I would trim that up. And I am going to trim it up just a little bit. Um, I've got, all of this looks fine on the bottom, but you need to look and see, see how there's, there's a little bit extra fabric right here. I'm going to uh, try to just trim that away a tiny bit. Hey, better too big than too small all right, always better too big than too small because you, I'm not going to mess with the inside of this at all because it's going to be covered by the inner pumpkin piece. So I'm going to take my trimming scissors here and just, I pull that up with my nail and I'm just going to trim this a little bit. And that's just to make sure I'm not going to have any kind of fabric sticking out outside of the final satin stitch. I don't know how wide that final satin stitch is going to be right now. Usually it's about three millimeters or so, but okay. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's going to look great. All right, next, I'm not changing thread colors for the pumpkin. I'm just going to do the placement line for the interface. that went right around on top of that tack down stitch for the outer pumpkin. What do we have now? Outline for the leaf. 
I need to do a thread color change. And the placement line for the face. Thread color change to black. All right, if you have a machine that does not automatically cut the jump threads, you're gonna wanna trim those right now. You always want to trim your jump threads at the earliest opportunity. This is the Quilters Cut and Press, and I love this for embroidery. For applique. Okay. That's perfect. Well, it's going to need a little trim. Okay, so we're ready to do this final satin stitching now. I am going to trim just a tiny bit. Y'all, you know, a lot of it has to do with how I placed this before I ironed it down. I think I may want to, in the future, change it to 1.3 millimeters maybe, just to be sure I don't get any fabric outside of that final satin stitch. This really turned out pretty good. It really did. So even if you don't have SVG files included with your embroidery design now, you can make your own using Embrilliance Essentials. And that's just fabulous. I love that feature about that software. So simple to do. And you don't have to have a scan and cut. If it'll make the SVG file in Embrilliance Essentials, you will be able to send that SVG file, USB or wireless or however you want to, to any cutting machine that uses SVG files for cut files. All right, that looks good. This is gonna stitch down just great. Now I wanna check. It looks like the zigzag covered all the edges of the fabric. Okay. Uh, let's see, the next thread color is a little vine. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a darker green. This is gonna take a little bit, so I'm pulling out the Brother My Stitch Monitor app. I'm gonna hit Darla, and it is connected and doing its thing, it will tell me when the vine is finished and I'm gonna go get myself a glass of iced tea. I just received a notice that said waiting for thread change down here at the bottom. That looks great. Well, what do we have now? We have the satin stitch for the inner pumpkin, so back to orange. I just received a notice on my phone that we have a thread problem and it's because the bobbin thread is almost empty. So when you have to do a bobbin thread replacement, it doesn't look like it cut this, so I'm gonna hit my uh, thread cutter button. So that does a clean cut of the top thread. It's got a good bobbin sensor on it. That is an awesome feature on this machine. Okay. So when that happens, right now, that happened down here at the bottom and you really can't tell. You know, if that had happened like in the middle of one of these satin stitches, I would use the needle plus minus and back up 10 to 20 stitches to make sure it's captured. But I think right now it's fine because it's on the bottom and it's gonna be enclosed in a seam. I'm not gonna do anything with that. It had finished, yeah. I need a thread color change to green for the leaf. And a thread change to black for the face. Oh, that face turned out just perfect. I really like it. Okay, and now it's gonna do the final echo quilting stitches. I think I'm gonna leave those in black and 
just let it do its thing here. I hope I have enough thread. Look, we're playing thread chicken. <laughs> I hope I win. <laughs> All finished. How cute is that? That's adorable. That turned out just perfect. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of this placemat now.